Hello ladies and gentlemen, hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Tech Team Tron's channel, where today we're going to virtualize PFSense in Proxmox. First thing we want to do is we want to create a Linux bridge. The Linux bridge allows us to activate and use unused nodes for incoming and going traffic. So in your Proxmox GUI, you want to create a Linux bridge. It's going to be vmbr2. You're going to type in the IP address and the sitter, the IDR. And that should get you going with this step. Okay. Now I'm trying to figure out which subnet range that I want it on. I think, uh, I think I ended up putting it on one. That should suffice. But this, like, the, the IP addresses might be a little bit different. So we'll go ahead and create that. The next bridge but before we do that we have to specify the name of the port or the network device we want to bridge the port to this is going to be my out going to my you know LAN node and then I have to go in and I had to correct the IP version forward that one so I it, the changes won't take until I reboot or I use a program. So you're going to have to reboot Proxmox host for all the changes in the network to take effect or use the program to do it. You can download PFSense. So we go to the official PFSense site and download the latest version. Okay. So this is how we do it. Go there, we just download PFSense. Uh, click the download section. Version we're downloading is 252 for AMD 64 bit architecture. We're going to use the DVD ISO installer. We're going to download that. It's going to give us a zipped ISO file. So we're going to have to unzip the PFSense ISO and upload in Proxmox. So with our downloaded file, We'll go ahead and move it to a place. I like to move it to like a place where I collect ISO files. But we'll go ahead and let that unzip into that place that I've specified for ISO files in my collection of files. So the file is going to unzip and it's going to move over to the location that I specified. Then we're going to like go into the Proxmox GUI. And we're going to go ahead and set up or upload that ISO. So we would go to the appropriate drive the drive that contains ISO images. And we click upload. Browse for the folder and the file that we need. There it is. Click on that. Click open. Click upload. And we'll just let it go. It's just going to take a minute because it's a pretty small file. So when this file is uploaded, we'll have that in our collection. And then what we can do is we can, you know, get ready to create a machine, a virtual machine using this ISO to install PFSense. Everything's done uploading. We're going to create the VM in Proxmox. We are going to create a Linux based virtual machine for the installation of PFSense. So 
in Proxmox. I'm in the Create Virtual Machine window. And uh, I'm going to name the machine PFSense. There's nothing much more that we have to do in this screen, but I like to check around just to make sure that I didn't miss anything because sometimes missing things could lead to problems down the road. Uh, we're going to check on the OS. And for the OS, we're going to have to use the ISO image from local. And remember, I uploaded the PFSense, so there it is. I will select it for the ISO image, and then I will click Next. Go to System. That's where Next will take you. Nothing to do there, but we might need to change that later to get things to boot properly. Um, I changed the disk size to 64 gigabytes on my drive setup. And you don't really need much space for PFSense, so that's plenty to run it. Okay, now we're going to select the number of sockets, which can be no more than the number of sockets that you have in your machine and the amount of cores. Then we're going to up the RAM to 4 gigabytes. That should be plenty enough RAM to run this program. Now we're going to like hook it up to one of our bridges. The first bridge, and this is going to be the bridge that brings the incoming internet traffic. We're going to take the firewall off just to make things less complicated. And then we're going to confirm our settings. The settings are not written in stone. So they are subject to change. So what we could do is we could click finish. But I'm not ready to boot the machine because I have not restarted this. I haven't rebooted the server as of yet. So we're going to add the network bridges created in the earlier steps to Proxmox. So we're going to have to like add the network device like bridge that we uh, installed take the firewall away then we have our network bridges for ingoing and outgoing traffic then we want to start the pfsense virtual machine in proxmox we're going to start the virtual machine to basically install pfsense okay so we're starting it up for the first time and i'm just going to let it real time do its thing Okay. So we're going to let it boot kernel and all that good stuff. Now there are a couple of steps in this interface that we would have to do. So definitely stay tuned for that. And once again, I just want you to see real time how this stuff works. All right, so we're at the point where we're going to install it. And I made a mistake there. I was trying to do something with a disk I didn't have. So uh, I had to change my installation options. So we'll just let the installation process run its course. So this is a fairly rapid install process, as the file was not that big. Okay, so. The extraction is complete. The installation is now finished. I do not want to do anything with this 
So I don't need a shell command, so I'm going to click no. But if you need a shell command, they have one for you that's really nice to have. Then I'm going to click reboot or, you know, tap reboot for enter, enter for reboot. And basically, hooray, you know, installation of uh, PFSense is complete. We have some com final configuration that we have to do. So we're going to remove the ISO from the CD drive of the VM. This prevents the installer from running again from the virtual CD drive. So simply do that. All right, going to boot PFSense from the VM of the hard drive. Okay. So that's all set. We're going to boot it up for the first time or second time. Well, the first time with uh, everything installed. And we're going to do some configuration settings. That's going to take a minute for things to become up and running. And I just want you to see this process, make sure that, you know, you're familiar when it occurs. Now, here's a couple of things that we're going to have to do. We're going to have to define the LAN and WAN interfaces. And then we're going to basically have to give this router an IP. So we get to designate an IP so that we can connect to the web GUI. So this little scene here takes a minute. Uh, what it's doing is configuring the interfaces. And I ask that you, you know, you be patient when you're installing this so that um, it gets installed properly. Because there's nothing you can do. Because when these things take a while, this is it. This is what you have. This is what you got to work with. Um, so that's why I'm just waiting for this to configure the LAN or the WAN interface. And it should be done momentarily. Okay. That's complete. And it's doing these other steps. Getting it ready. Getting our IPs up and everything like that running. This is very necessary, but the best thing to do is just wait it out because eventually it'll get done. It just takes a little while to get these things done. All right. So, so the first thing I want to do is I want to assign the network interfaces, set the WAN and LAN interfaces if they're not already done. So I'm going to enter option one. And then basically, I'm going to pick the device. It shows you the available interfaces. I'm going to select and then set the uh, interface IP address after this. So I set the, the IP address of the... Uh, I assign the interfaces. Now it's time to... Um, <clears throat> configure the interface for the LAN. Going to set the interface IP address so that I can log in to this web GUI. And there's a couple of questions that ask you. You're going to have to enter the subnet. You have to enter. If you want to set up for a LAN, press enter. I'm going to press enter for none or don't press enter. Enter something and then press enter. But I'm going to enter nothing for none. And IP6 address, no. And configure the DHCP server for sure. And then you're going to enter the address, starting address of the IP for client. Then we're going to enter the ending address of the IP for client. And then we're going to, you don't, you you don't have to revert to HTTP. You can say no. I said yes. Doesn't make a big issue for me. All right. So everything's configured. Now we're going to load and log in to PFSense from the web interface with the IP address assigned. 
and this is kind of what you get after you log in with the default logins. You're going to get that. This. And that's really it. This is what it looks like. Freshly installed. You go and configure everything or you can upload. Well, thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. If you have enjoyed this, feel free to click the like button, share it with a friend, and also subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Thanks for watching. And have a great day.